Why, hello there. I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm an artist. I work in all different sorts of mediums, and I'll be doing some pen and ink today, but also talking about some art things in general that might be of interest to people of all mediums. So don't go away. I'm going to talk about the difference between confidence and competence as an artist. And I also have a couple other things to share. I want to do a little online eventy type stuff coming up in the next two months. And I also want to tell you about this project, this pen and ink project, and get your feedback on what you think I should do with it. All right, let's get started. So I want to tell you a little story. I know someone who was running for a political office. It wasn't like politics, politics. It was a city council or a county commissioner or something. It wasn't a huge thing, but it was running for office and she was going to have an event. She was going to give a speech at some event. And I was so excited because I love nothing better than a good speech because I'm a Toastmaster. And beforehand, before we went over, I asked her how she was feeling about it. And she said, oh my goodness, I feel just fine. She said, I was a Toastmaster. So I, you know, I'm doing great. It'll, it'll be no big deal. So I said, good, that's great. You're not nervous. Well, I went to the event and she gave her speech. And I have to say it was one of the worst speeches that I have ever heard. I was a little shocked. Uh, because she said she'd been a Toastmaster. And I am used to people who are Toastmasters in my world are really good. They have a beginning, a middle, and a clear end to their speeches. They have a call to action. They tell personal stories. Like there's all these things you learn in Toastmasters about how to be interesting and compelling and get people to do things at the end of your speech. You inspire them to take an action. And I didn't find much of any of that in her speech. I asked her afterward, like, you know, how did you feel about it? I didn't tell her what I thought of her speech. I know she doesn't watch my videos, so I'm safe. But she said, oh, I thought it went great. She said, you know, I wasn't nervous at all. I was super. Well, she did not end up winning the election. And it may or may not have anything to do with how well she did or didn't give any speeches, because I think there's other stuff going on in in all these different kind of races. Anyway, I just kind of asked her a little bit more about what Toastmasters had given her that she deployed in that speech. Just was curious what she thought made a good speech. And she said, well, you know, I got to the point where I was no longer like ready to throw up when I finished a speech. So I, I didn't continue. And I said, how far did you make it? And she made it in three out of 10 of the lessons in the first, the kind of beginner program. And that was it. She quit. <laughs> she quit because the butterflies were gone. And all she had gone there for in her mind was to get rid of the butterflies. It wasn't to learn how to communicate really well and give a great speech. She just wanted to get rid of the butterflies. And since she had succeeded at that, she was done. And that story has come back to my mind in so many different arenas. How many times we end up in our lives becoming confident in ourselves in something. But confidence doesn't always mean you're really good at it. You haven't conquered it necessarily, even if you've conquered the fear of it. And that is true of all different kinds of areas of life, but it's true in art as well. There's a lot of times when we think we're all that in a bag of chips and we're not really. I am 100% aware of how good I'm not. I, when I look at my work, there's sometimes when I look at something and I'm like, oh, wow, that was the most amazing thing I've ever done. And there's other times when I'm like, I stink at that. I really do. I've said previously a couple of videos ago that I wanted to work on my figure drawing because I can't draw a person that looks like that person. I can draw something that looks like a person, 
but not necessarily that one. And I just want to get better at that. So I continue my education. I continue learning, continue practicing. And that leads me to an invitation if you choose to join me in something I'm going to call, at least for right now, let's draw together. Later in the year, it might be let's paint together or let's sketch together. Who knows what it'll be. But I'm going to do two of my drawing classes over again as if I'm a student. I'm going to take my own classes. And the first one is going to be whimsical sketching. I'm going to start it on January 22nd. And if you've already taken it, you're welcome to join me and do it again. See how you've grown as an artist since you took the class the first time. Or you can take it for the first time and just follow the videos and do the lessons. I'm going to just see how my style has changed. Is there something cool and different that I want to do with the lessons? When they're done, I'll put my pieces, you know, post my pieces in the classroom as well as Art Venture. But Art Venture is where I'm going to mostly be doing them, talking about them, posting them. And if I have other learnings or any extra tidbits to add to the classes, then I'll do that. So I'm excited to do some pen and ink work, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The class is on sale and will be through the end of my little time period, January 31st. If you want to join me and use whatever paper and pen that you would like to do. I'm going to use a fountain pen and uh, that sort of thing for mine. But then we have the second one of these, which is going to be 30 Days to More Confidence Sketching. It's another class. It's a level two, but a lot of people take this before they take Drawing 101 because Drawing 101 feels a little more like an art school class. And, you know, you draw a lot of cylinders and you shade them and stuff. And more, this more confidence sketching class is really about building your confidence, just getting you to draw things and get used to the fact that, you know, it's not always going to be perfect, but starting is better than not starting. So I'm going to teach you things like how to draw a circle without having to trace it. I'm going to teach you how to do some shading. We're going to, you know, move our way through the lessons. They get a little more compl complex as we go. And there's going to be guaranteed some lessons that you don't like because I introduce people to like all different kinds of things. There are people who discover trees are their jam. There are other people that are like, I never want to see another tree as long as I live. I am not doing landscapes. Other people find they love the animals or whatever. And it's really just an exposure to a lot of different things. And I want to go through and do my lessons again. I need to order a new sketchbook, which is why the whimsical sketching is coming first. So I have time to get something in the mail to order one up for myself. And then I'm going to start on February 1st. And you're welcome to join me in that. I'm going to do the same thing going to post my work, just still pictures of them in Art Venture, add them to the classroom in the 30 days class. And I especially want to redraw this pig because when I look at it now, I'm like, that is so out of proportion to the actual pig. I know so much more about proportion now than I used to. I am excited to see all the areas that I have grown as an artist and how my drawings differ from the original to the one that I'll do this year. So I hope that if you've taken this class already, you might consider redoing it along with me. And if you have not taken it, then take it for the first time. The class is on sale from now until March 2nd. So the entire time of me doing this class, you can get it at a discount and uh, come join me. You can join in any time, by the way, if you don't see this video until later. You can join in the middle of February and just start with day one and go from there. Now, what does it do for you to redo a class? You know, like, why would I even bother? Well, partially, like I said, to see where I've grown, like how, how far have I come? And it doesn't have to be redoing class homework. You can just redo old drawings. Just find something that you did a long time ago and see what your skills now bring you. But it also helps to keep that education going. Like the person I talked about who stopped her Toastmasters way too early, she stopped growing and 
the level she reached was the level she was at when she left that program. She never got further. And I, myself, I just want to keep getting further because there's so many things that I see that I do and I'm like, yeah, it's okay, but I know I can do that better. I can rock that if I just applied myself, if I knew how to do this, that, and the other, you know, I'm taking painting lessons from an oil painter, even though I'm learning in gouache. I, I love taking classes in crazy things and learning all different kinds of new skills. I get excited by that. So maybe that's why I like teaching because I, I love learning so much, but I want to encourage you to continue your learning and don't just stop when you feel confident only because we never get in art, we never get to that point of complete competence. I mean, even people who are famous artists and have, you know, reached pinnacles are always practicing. They're always you know, testing new colors, testing new techniques and things. And if you want to be, you know, a good artist and you want to keep growing and keep developing, that requires just constantly honing your skills, whether through daily sketching or taking classes, whatever that best practice is for you. Just invest in yourself and your own skills in order to grow as an artist. I told you back at the beginning that I was going to explain what this whole project is all about that I'm working on. I've been drawing these letters for, I guess, a couple of years now. And since it was letter writing week, <laughs> I thought I'd do some letter drawing because I was drawing letters. Get it? Yeah, made that connection. Anyway, I did get back to it this week. I have not finished the entire alphabet yet. But my original thought was to do a coloring book of them. But I don't really like coloring book paper. So I'm thinking I might research what it would take to print them on a nice cardstock and not in a bound book, but as separate sheets. So you could frame them, you could you know, color them up and you could foil them. You could do all kinds of things with them. And if you're interested in that, let me know so that I'll know if it's even worth the research time to figure out what to do with that. But that's kind of my, my big idea. The library book one that I did for the L that was at the beginning of this video, it doesn't really fit with the character of all of these. You can kind of see they're florally and flouncy, but I did put it in my shop. So if you would like to purchase the L, the books version of the L, and color it up and maybe go take it to your library and make it a sign they could put on their bulletin board at the library to let them know that you love books. Because since everybody's trying to ban books nowadays, I thought that would be nice to do something to tell libraries we love them and we love books. So there's, there's that at least. And uh, I'll put a link to that in the doobly-doo down below, as well as the new class. Like a lot of people missed the video that I did on coffee. And I think all my alcohol marker people just kind of, I don't know, ran away or something. So if you missed the announcement about the new Copic class, go check it out. All right. And now let's take a look at the entire collection, including the paper that I'm drawing these on, which is a Hanamula paper. It's their lettering paper and it's 80 pounds. So it's not very heavy and it comes in different sizes. They're weird sizes. It's European measurements. So it's weird to me, but it's this hand lettering paper. And I'll just do a flip through of the alphabet as it has done so far. There's not all the alphabet is in here, but I was trying to do each one different. There's some that are very similar styles, so I might redo those in order to have each one be completely different. And then there's some of them like the F that got very static. I'm not really sure if that's great. What do you think of the static versus all of the sort of loose edges ones? I haven't really decided what I like, but I still don't know what I'm going to do with them. So I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to redo any until I decide what I'm going to do. But they're really, really fun designs to do. And this was the original L. And then that, of course, compares to the book L. So you can go purchase that one. Go color it up and uh, deliver it to your library. Um, yeah. 
So I'll just keep flipping through here. And I just want to say thank you for visiting me today. Thank you for hanging out with me while I was drawing. And next week, I'm going to paint one of these. I want to try seeing what it's like to watercolor one without the black lines. So I'm going to have to redraw all those little bits and then try to convert it. So next week will be a watercolor week. So stay tuned for that. I'm also going to introduce my new palette, new colors for 2024. And that's about it. Links to the doobly do. Make sure you check them out. Hit the like button if you could. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.